The Battle of Plymouth was a naval battle in the First Anglo-Dutch War. It took place on 16 August 1652, and was a short battle, but had the unexpected outcome of a Dutch victory over England. General at sea George Askew of the Commonwealth of England attacked an outward-bound convoy of the Dutch Republic commanded by Vice Commodore Michiel de Reuter. The two commanders had been personal friends before the war. The Dutch were able to force Askew to break off the engagement, and the Dutch convoy sailed safely to the Atlantic while Askew sailed to Plymouth for repairs. Background on 19 July de Reuter was appointed Vice Commodore, an originally Dutch creation between Captain and Rear Admiral, with the Confederate Dutch fleet and shortly after took over command, in the absence of Vice Admiral Witter with, of a squadron assembling in the Wheelingen, off the coast of Zeeland, to escort a large convoy. Around 10 August, de Reuter took sea before the merchantman had arrived to seek out an English fleet of 40 ships, commanded by Askew, which he knew had left the Downs on 19 July. De Reuter's squadron at that moment consisted of 23 warships and six fireships, with a total of about 600 cannon and 1,700 men. As de Reuter reported to the States General of the Netherlands, most crews were badly trained, many ships poorly maintained and he had just two months of supplies. Nevertheless, he preferred to give battle early without the burden of having to protect the convoy. Reaching the English Channel, he soon discovered that Askew was not interested in fighting the Dutch squadron, but avoided it in the hope of intercepting the convoy. To lure Askew out de Reuter started to cruise off the coast of Sussex, causing an uproar with the local population, but Askew despite his fleet having grown to 42 ships, did not react. Meanwhile, de Reuter had lost two ships, sent out to escort a single incoming merchantman to the mouth of the Somme River, when they collided, sinking one, the St. Nicolas, and severely damaging the other, Gelderland. On the 11th of August de Reuter at last did rendezvous with the convoy of 60 merchantmen off Gravelines in the southern North Sea. He was pleased to notice that it brought 10 warships with it, bringing his total to 31. On 13 August de Reuter re-entered the channel near Calais. His instructions were to escort the convoy to the Atlantic, their most ships would head for the Mediterranean together with their 10 escorts, while the original squadron would have to wait to pick up merchantmen coming from the West Indies and transporting silver. Askew's fleet had then grown to 47 vessels, 38 men of war, among which armed merchantmen, five fireships, and four smaller vessels. Battle. On 15 August, the English spotted the Dutch fleet off the coast of Plymouth, and took sea. Askew the next day, off the coast of Brittany, around 1330 attempted a direct attack from the north against the convoy, having the weather gauge. He hoped it would scatter, allowing him to capture some very profitable prizes. But de Reuter unexpectedly separated his naval squadron and changed course to meet Askew's attack, shielding the merchantmen. Askew's ships were on average more heavily armed, but extremely disorganized because the fastest vessels, among them Askew's flagship the George and the vanguard of his vice admiral William Haddock, had broken formation in the hope of catching. During a running battle, straggling Dutch merchantmen, they were now unable to form a line of battle and fully exploit their advantage in firepower over the Dutch. The Dutch squadron, however, sailing to the northwest, was in a rough defensive leeward line formation, with the Frisian acting Rear Admiral Joris Peter Zouan van den Broek commanding the van. De Reuter himself commanding the centre and Hollandic Rear Admiral Jan Ertsen Verhoef commanding the rear. Around 1600 the Dutch fleet and seven forward English vessels met and almost immediately passed through each other, both sides afterwards claiming 
to have broken the enemy line. Having thus gained the weather gauge the Dutch at once exploited this by turning and attacking from the north. They would describe this as a second breaking of the line but probably the battle soon degenerated into a confusing melee, with their best ships now surrounded by the mass of Dutch vessels and bearing the brunt of the fight, the slower remainder of the English fleet largely consisting of poorly trained hired merchantmen, was reaching the scene of the battle, not overly zealous to get involved. Their numerical superiority thus also gained the English little. The largest Dutch vessel, the Dutch East India Company warship Vogelstreus, by Dutch standards heavily armed with a lower tier of 18-pounders, got separated from the rest of the Dutch fleet and was attacked by three English ships at once and boarded. Her crew was close to surrendering when her captain, the Frisian du Oral Quiche, threatened to blow her up first. Faced with this alternative the crew rallied, drove off the English boarding team and put up such a fight that the English vessels, much damaged and too even in a sinking condition, broke off the attack. The Dutch employed their favourite tactic of disabling enemy vessels by firing at their masts and rigging with chain shot. At the end of the afternoon Askew, feeling rather unsupported, decided to break off the unsuccessful engagement and to retreat to Plymouth to repair his ships before any became so damaged they would be captured. The Bonadventure could only disengage after an English fireship. The charity commanded by Captain Simon Norton set itself alight and frightened off the attacking Dutch vessels. De Reuter in his journal concluded, If our fireships had been with us, they remained leeward. We would with the help of God have routed the enemy, but praise be God who has blessed us in that our enemy fled by himself. Though 45 sails strong and of great force neither side lost a warship, but both sides suffered heavy casualties among their crews. The Dutch had about 60 dead and 50 wounded. The reports on the English losses differ. One set the number as high as 700 casualties including the wounded, another mentioned 91 dead. Among them Iskew's flag captain Thomas Lyle, Rear Admiral Michael Pack had a leg amputated and shortly afterwards died of the complications. The English spent one fireship. De Reuter pursued the English fleet after its retreat. On the morning of the next day both forces transpired to be still close to each other and De Reuter hoped by aggressively pursuing to capture some stragglers. Several English ships were in tow and might well be abandoned if he pressed hard enough. However Askew, fearing for his reputation, on 17 August convinced the English Council of War to again give battle if necessary and brought his entire force safely back to Plymouth on 18 August. De Reuter then sent two warships to escort the merchant fleet through the channel to the Atlantic. For a while he considered trying to attack the enemy fleet at Anchorage and Plymouth Sound, but in the end decided against it as he did not have the weather gauge. Then hearing that General at sea Robert Blake was sailing to the west with a superior force of 72, he chose to withdraw to the west and kept assembling incoming West Indies ships throughout September. On 15 September Blake had reached Portland and sent out a squadron of 18 sail commanded by William Penn to intercept De Reuter but the latter escaped east along the French coast while Blake had been forced by a storm to seek shelter in Tall Bay. De Reuter escorted 12 merchantmen safely to Calais on the 22nd of September when his supplies had nearly run out. Shortly afterwards nine or ten of the Dutch ships, among them De Reuter's flagship the Kleiner Neptunis, then had to return to port for repairs probably because of insufficiently repaired damage from the battle, loss of prestige for the English and the beginning of fame for de Reuter. The English ships had expected to easily defeat the Dutch in a set battle because of their superiority in armament and numbers. While the failure came as an unpleasant surprise to the English, the Dutch populace rejoiced in the tactical draw, hailing de Reuter, who had not been well known among the larger public as a naval hero. The English accused some merchantmen captains of cowardice. Askew was blamed for poor leadership and organization. His attempt to present the encounter as a victory failed to convince. 
He lost command after this battle, though probably for political reasons. He had known royalist sympathies. Less important was his emphasis on capturing prizes while avoiding battle. In the first year of the war this was a very common attitude. The English mainly seeing the conflict as one large privateering campaign, allowing them to gain riches at the expense of the Dutch. Only with the Battle of the Gabbard would they really try to establish naval dominion. This victory was very important to the naval career of de Reuter. It was the first time he commanded an independent force as a fleet commander. Before, he only had had sub-command of a flotilla aiding Portugal in 1641. As a result of the battle he acquired the nickname the Sea Lion. Before he could return home, de Reuter was first involved in the Battle of the Kentish Knock but arriving in Middleburg he was received by the States of Zealand and rewarded with a golden honorary chain of a hundred Flemish pounds for both battles because he in the first had shown masculine courage and in the second, courageous prudence, having convinced Whitler with to a timely retreat. Ships involved. No full list exists, and especially the English order of battle is poorly known. The following are lists of known participants, with the Dutch list being the one still extant and containing the names of the original 23 warships and six fireships with which de Reuter sailed, from the Wheeling and United Provinces England George 52, Amity 36, Success 30, Ruth Chapter 30. Brazil Frigate 24, Malaga Merchant 30, Increase 36, Captain, Thomas Varvel is the son-in-law of Captain, John Flower who is owner of Increase and father of Catherine Flower, Vanguard 46, Success 36, Pelican 42, Pearl Asterisk 24, John and Elizabeth Asterisk 26, George Bonaventure Asterisk 20, Anthony Bonaventure 36, Unity, Maidenhead 36, Constantin, Bachelor, Charity, Expended, Ships Marked Asterisk at Probables, 